It is really quite a pleasure to have this opportunity to make common cause, because fundamentally, that is what I'm here to do. Where Deborah Santiago, our co-founder here, you would have everything I'm going to say punctuated with data and analysis. And I can promise you that it exists and that you will be able to look it up after we finish talking. But what I want to do is to leverage the fact that our opportunities to work together are vast and wide, and that my history with SACNAS is actually quite long. So the proposition of what we're going to do over the next few minutes is to find the intersection between the two of us. You've begun with this introduction, which is it's about human capital. That fundamentally is where we all work. And the proposition that what you are seeking to do for yourselves, what you want to do with your careers, how you want to form community in your discipline, but also in the organizations where you invest your energies, that is exactly the domain of higher education. And for me and my experience, I came to the University of Texas at Austin fully expecting to see a campus community that looked like Texas. And I noticed pretty quickly that that was not the case that there weren't the numbers of Mexican-American and black students enrolled at the university as there were in the state itself. Now, instinctively, I knew that there was something not right, that that wasn't something that happened naturally, that it really was a byproduct of a whole series of opportunities or lack of opportunities. So for me, the lens that I used when I began was that something needed to change. And for me, the question of who needs to change and how that, need, that change needs to happen. But this whole proposition of change is one that all of you have already experienced. If you're the first in your family to go to college, you've already experienced the social contract that happens with academic institutions. The expectations that you walk onto that campus already knowing all the rules and regulations. Because while there are some that have become a, a bit better at telling you, demystifying what's the process of picking your major and finding your mentor and figuring out how to really apply your talents, most of us have to do it the hard way. So when you look at a question like this of who changes and how do they change, I think probably where we have a point of affinity is that most of us have been, made, the message has been made very clear to us that we're the ones that have to change. That the system or the organization or the area, it's fine. We're the ones that have to bend. Bueno, orale, we are a versatile folk and we do know how to do that. But our numbers are large enough now that the question of who changes and how, particularly on your watch, is really where I want to situate my comments. So you've heard that what our currency is, is not only change, but change that is connected to policy. To make arguments in policy, you must look at data. But at Excellencia in Education, we are asset-based. And ours is not an esoteric exercise. We're not chronicling the growth of the Latino community, the youth of the Latino community, our dominance in states all over this country, because it's interesting. We're doing it because we are tracking an asset for this country. We are looking at the proposition that the better this country gets at facilitating the learning experiences of all students, the more we will have the tactical response that we need as it relates to our economic future, our civic structures, it is about human capital. Now, in this proposition of looking at data, this is a hallmark, I think, of most effective change. And I want to make the case to all of you that even as you thrive in your chosen discipline, even as you move into your careers as future faculty members or heads of nonprofit organizations that are focused on STEM talent, or as you begin to move into industry, you recognize every moment of your journey how influential you are. You know by your own experiences that you are one of very few. 
whether it's because of your choice of discipline or because of where you come from. When you speak, yes, you are speaking for yourself, but you also are an exemplar for others. And I would ask that you know about the talent flow, the capacities of everyone that comes behind you to make their place in higher education. As I had that opportunity at the University of Texas at Austin, because I was a student activist and the graduate school at UT knew it had to do something, I had the opportunity to really look at a blank piece of paper and say, at the very least, I can do better than what we were doing. And in the years that I had the opportunity to work with 85 different departments, eight different colleges, I had the profound respect for people who made their way by themselves. But I also recognized that when we band together, it does create a greater means to influence. In that experience of working at UT Austin, I had the privilege of meeting one of your founders, Jean Cotarrobles. His energy and interest and his humility and commitment to students and community are the hallmarks of my memory of him. May he rest in peace. That ability to be who he was and be an outstanding scientist and a damn good policymaker, that's what I think is probably alive and well here at SACNAS. And that's why I come to you today wanting to make the case for what it is that you do, but that you will do. Now, in the course of your career and in the last 10 years, the country has begun to recognize that we have to address the flow of talent into STEM in a different way. Now, at Excellency in Education, we are very asset-based. We want to make the case and persuade people and invite them to get involved based on the bright future that lies before us, rather than scare techniques about what would happen if we don't invest. I'll take them both, as long as people move, because definitely we are people of action. But we don't make these arguments in isolation. We make these arguments concurrent with others. And a report that I would guess that most of you have known about started in the year 2005, when many more people than normal were focusing on this question of where is the talent in STEM? How is this country going to keep up in a global enterprise in terms of STEM disciplines, but more importantly, what STEM yields? That report is colloquially referred to as the gathering storm. Now, when it was first released in 2005, it's uh, after the colon reference was very optimistic. In 2010, when not much had happened and the same report was being re-released, revisited, we were talking doomsday. Now, in that period of time, 2005 to 2010, what also happened is that increasingly everyone is aware of the dominance of Latino students in the K-12 system. Concurrently, we are also looking at this question of college completion nationally. Put all of that together, and it is absolutely the moment when all of us must step forward and say, we are here working hard, fully engaged, and we are the solution. You at SACNAS do that on an annual basis at your conference. You do that as individuals 24-7. What I am saying to you today is let's do it together. The more we can say in detail what works that you know about, how it works, and speed up the process of replication and use by others, the faster together we can call the question when people say, what is the talent base for the 21st century? It's here in this room and all the students that you teach and all the communities that you come from. That's the proposition that Excelencia in Education puts before everyone. One of the means that we do it is examples of Excelencia. 
In 2005, a year after we started the organization, increasingly we found that people were very comfortable talking about deficits and problems. There was a lulling quality to the nature of conversations about the talent flow. People were very eager to talk about the achievement gap and pretty quiet and slow on the uptake when it came to solutions. We really had to break that open. And the way that we went about it was to say, we know as practitioners, as policymakers, that there are solutions underway right now. Let's create a vehicle to bring them to national attention. Examples of Excelencia since its launch in 2005 has recognized the critical nature of STEM. The very first example of Excelencia was the math department at the University of Texas at Austin. And it was chosen because of its capacity to produce Latino graduate recipients at the doctoral level and at the undergraduate level. By itself, a very important reason to recognize it. But where I found it particularly telling is the numbers of those graduates who then chose teaching. As your president is, talks about SACNAS, Gabe Montaño, and he talks about we're in this as a marathon, not as a sprint. We are long distance runners together. When you take a moment and visit our website, you will see intersections, probably people that you know right now. All of that is the backbone of what is this common cause that we can make together. Most specifically, this report is where together we have gone public with the great strength and talent that exists in this room, that exists in our country, that is Latino. This report got a lot of attention, finding your workforce, Latinos in STEM. But what I would want to say to you that you carry with you is why we did this report, because this is where I think we can work together going forward. Here in Washington, DC, we have an opportunity to sit at a lot of tables and hear a lot of people talk about what should be. At the same time, we're rubbing elbows with people who can do more and quite frankly should do more. And after a while, the discussion has to be one of action. Not so much after a while. Right now, it needs to be one of action. We decided to use our strength as a policy data-driven organization to call the question. Because too often, we were sitting down with corporate people, industry people, folks in federal agencies who simply could not find Latino talent. And of course, for me, then they weren't looking. So we wrapped it up with a bow and brought it to them. This report chronicles from credentials to graduate degrees, the top 25 institutions in the country graduating Latinos. It makes it clear what many of us already know, that there is concentration in key states. It also underscores some of the things that we have to address, which is that many of us are concentrated in the lower areas rather than at the doctoral level or master's program. But what it is is a tool that we use on an ongoing basis. And when we brought it to the public, we did it with SACNAS at the table. A webinar was held, we did it with support from Microsoft, and I'm pleased to say since its April release, it is being cited all over the country. Now for those of you who work with data and analysis, it's fairly pedestrian work. This is all public available data. The difference is we brought it to the conversation with an action agenda. And the action agenda is, if this is what works, and here is where we have human capital, it is now time to invest. In coming to you today, I more than anything else want you to know, we are proud of what you do. We are eager to learn about your successes. We want very much to be able to tell anyone who doubts the capacities, but more importantly, the tactics and strategies are there to be deployed. And we want you to know that you can count on us. The proposition 
that this country will thrive or diminish as people of color dominate the civic structure. That's what's happening on our watch. We know our capacities. We have our commitments, not only to this country, but to our disciplines and the future. My enthusiasm to be here today is for us to find the ways to work together. Muchísimas gracias.